But yeah, and really cool, just a piece of code you can add. So like if somebody sees this video today, they can literally go and deploy this on their, again, yeah. with the appropriate router can deploy it as you're going to do right now, I understand. I, I believe yeah. you're going to you're gonna run this. Enough talking. Uh, let's just create a connector here. Um, I do have a, a Ericom tenant uh, already configured. Uh, we do have one connector running from one of my uh, AWS instances, but let's create a different one. I do have the uh, Dushop uh, container running on my Nuke, which is connected to R1900. Uh, crane, crane point router, and I'll just add a connector and expose that application uh, to the portal, and I will try to access it through the portal later on. Okay. So I'm going to configure my LAN subnets. I would like to expose through the uh, through the connector, and in this particular case, it's going to be slash 24 subnet. But like I said, you can expose as specific or as as wide as you would like. Uh, right. through the connector and that doesn't even uh, it doesn't even touch the zero trust policies with uh, we're going to be you know configuring or could be configuring for this particular resource got it um, we don't need to specify public IP and I'll just let's say it's going to run an Ashburn pop and boom the connector has been created what we need is our authentication key and that authentication key uh, we'll just add to uh, our configuration, which I'll show you in a second. As you can see, the new connector, it's called the Juice Shop, yep. um, has been created. It is currently down, of course, uh, because nothing is running the Cradle Point side yet, but it's there. Now, because we already have the off key and everything else, all the details we need, we can go back to R1900. Uh, if you click on the uh, configuration added system containers and go to projects uh, and you will see where there is a, um, there is a space where you can define a new um, new, uh, new container right to run. Then you click on add and click on compose and I have something here. And actually it's the same thing you can copy from the repo as a trail point container dot yaml file which is basically a docker compose uh, for this particular container uh, and you're going to have to supply your tenant name connector name all key api key and the tenant id okay. and i've got all these pieces in place i'll show you what it looks like in a second if i copy and paste it right there in the docker compose section so in our case, it's uh, the tenant name, um, the connector name, and all other pieces are in place. Uh, we'll just go back to Compose Builder and add our network uh, where that container is going to be running. In this case, it's a primary LAN. Now we'll just add the service. Um, we we'll see what the device had been added. We don't need any volumes. Uh, we'll just need to create a network here uh, and let's say our connector is going to be running 0.2 IP address and the click save again obviously uh, within the range that you originally entered um yes it doesn't have to um, okay it doesn't have to as long as it has an access to um, the resource you are uh, exposing right? ah, so you okay got it, it. The connector yep. itself doesn't have to be in that same subnet. Okay. Uh, but once you configured everything in IP and uh, network, uh, it will expose it in the compose section here um, in the networks and will pre populate all the details what you need. Now, if you click save, yep, I'll just need to provide a project name, of course. Um, clicking save and just commit in the NCM, commit those changes. We'll create that container on the router and the router will start pulling that container off the uh, Docker hub. Oh. 
uh, it will take a couple minutes to pull that container. But once that is done, we will see uh, that particular connector will, uh, will show as connected in the platform. Now, while we're waiting, why don't we go ahead and configure it as an application in our portal? Um, I already have some corporate web apps pre-configured. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and add one more and call it a do shop. Uh, and I did have a do shop. Um, yeah, here we go. The do shop logo. Uh, and our IP is actually pretty simple. It's going to be 192.168.0.127, and the port is 3000. This is where my container is running right now. Ah, okay. I'll just click save. And that's it. We've had the web application created. Wow. Great. Now, in order to add it to our portal, uh, we'll just need to create a policy for it. And we'll call it the corporate application. And the corporate application would be our juice shop. And the access type will we'll say it's going to be isolate. Click Save. And you're good to go. Now, let's go to back to our connectors. It's probably still pulling. Well, it takes a little bit of time, but uh, we um, access our portal. And as you can see, our portal is actually fronted by the off screen. Yeah. Um, and I actually have to log in before I access that portal. Uh, you can see there is no, there are no uh, agents or, you know, nothing else is running. Basically, I'm just... <clears throat> Oh, and look, it came up. I, I remember the juice shop, that little uh, yep. icon that you created during, uh, yeah. That is correct. So as you can see, the juice shop is there. Uh, I don't think you can, you can access it at this point until the connector is fully up. Yep. Uh, but it's, it just shows you how easy it is to create the uh, corporate web application and expose it in the portal. And you can create anything you want. In this particular case, you know, we have a number of uh, those apps pre-configured. If we click on box, for example, it's going to open that box.com, um, the website in the isolation. Yeah. Uh, and the way you can tell it is actually the isolated session is by looking at the uh, that green tab on top. I see that. Um, and also the tab name, which is prefixed by... Um, CR in the, in the square bracket, oh. uh, which means that we're, we're using the crystal rendering for this particular one. But uh, yeah, this, it, as you can it's see, amazing. it's like a very kind of a native type of um, browsing. Uh, you can, you know, click around, you can do anything you would do ordinarily with this particular application with the exception with this is actually running in um in the isolation and on a container on the uh on the router right uh, no this one is not on the container this one is a public app so oh you okay don't really need a connector to uh connect this particular app oh to. right of course yeah 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 i get yeah in this particular thing uh it's taking its sweet time um to to actually um to instantiate Taking a little well, still, though, I mean, I think you, I think we were, I think it only took you because I was looking at the, our running time and it was, I think less than 10 minutes for sure. I think it was around, I think like seven, eight minutes, yeah. if that for you to, yeah, you know, get it set up to add the web app, to create the policy. And look, just as we're talking, it's yep. it's up it and running. Up. It's up and running. So if we click on the juice shop now, we're supposed to be, oh, not yet. Perhaps we need to reload the portal. Let's see. Yeah. Look at that. Look at this. Wow. 10 minutes, you're done. Uh, the yeah. application is there. Uh, you expose it 
through the portal. It is protected and fronted by the IDP. Um, you control all the aspects of the session with this application and the connector is running on the cradle point router with all the failover and auto recovery capabilities. How that cool is so that? cool. That is so cool. And then obviously you can, you know, control the, like you were saying earlier, the uploads, the downloads, like how much interaction they can have, um, you know, yeah. the, the file sanit yeah, sanitizing files, like all that kind of stuff. You have the control Everything. in there. Everything, including the clipboard controls, including the manually typed data. Um, wow. You control pretty much any, you know, anything and everything um, when it comes to that session. So very, very cool. You know, we've been talking about this for a little while, so it's kind of really neat to see it finally kind of being being configured and, and rolled out as we said it would. Yeah. And really good it, stuff. It's open. The repo is there. Instructions are in the repo, how to run it. Uh, if you've got a, a cradle point router, which is capable of running uh, containers, give it a shot. Uh, if you want to try the uh, Ericom's WEI technology, reach out. Uh, yeah. And uh, we'll set you up. And it's very easy uh, and uh, a very nice and elegant solution for the uh, corporate web applications. Absolutely. Yeah, you can leave us a comment right here. We'll make sure uh, to reply and get you in touch. And then obviously, like we've said earlier, we'll have the GitHub repo in the description. Obviously, if you'd like to learn more, you can visit us at Ericom. Dot com. Thanks so much, Sergey. This was a this is a pretty fun demo to see for sure. Anytime, Peter. Yeah. Um, well, next time we'll talk about something very very exciting, but I'll I won't disclose it. This was kind of exciting in and of itself. So, <laughs> very cool. Thanks everyone for watching. If you enjoyed content like this, please like, share, and certainly subscribe to the channel for my good buddy Sergey. I'm Peter. And we're with Ericom, the cybersecurity unit at Cradle Point. Thanks for watching. Thanks, everyone. Ericom, the cybersecurity unit of Cradle Point. Visit us at www.ericom.com today.